The Isovox 2 is a portable vocal isolation booth that is made for singers, voiceover artists, and studio owners of all kinds. The purpose of the Isovox 2 in its design is to both eliminate unwanted room sound, that way you can get really clean recordings, and also to allow vocalists to sing without disturbing the neighbors. Just to give you an idea of the sound quality, you are listening to my voice inside the Isovox as we speak, as you can see here with my flashy jazz hands. As an owner, I feel like it's an essential piece of equipment for any home studio, session vocalist, or even the enthusiastic hobbyist. And yet, I feel like for the cost, usually around a thousand bucks, it falls short in a few areas that I wanted to discuss with you guys today. So again, as an owner of an Isovox 2, I just wanted to offer three things that I feel could be improved to benefit vocalists everywhere. Let's get started. Either having an adjustable mic holder to hold dynamic microphones like the SM7B, or just creating more space in the back to accommodate these types of microphones. So I primarily am a heavy metal vocalist, and I like to work with the Shure SM7B. It's a great, affordable microphone, has a high threshold for SPL, and is just a great workhorse microphone for heavy metal vocals, that sort of stuff. The problem with this is that the Isovox 2 is designed primarily to accommodate more vertical type microphones. They say that they include dynamic microphones, but it's primarily geared towards condenser microphones, those ones that stand up vertically. And as you can see with the SM7B, it is anything but vertical. It's very awkwardly shaped. It's more directional, right? Because it's a dynamic cardioid microphone. It's, it's very specific. So you want to be singing directly into the front of the microphone. I personally was able to kind of jerry-rig a Shure SM7B into the Isovox, but even then it's kind of like the back of the microphone is right up against the back of the Isovox, and I don't know if that causes any issues with the actual sound. There might be a buildup of like certain frequencies there. The other thing too is that as a singer, I like to stand a little far back from the mic to control my dynamics a little bit more. Whereas if I have some you know loud parts and quiet parts, if I back off a little bit while recording, the levels are a little bit more consistent. And this can be a problem with this microphone being placed closer than a normal condenser microphone would be. The Isovox 2 is designed for more vertical condenser microphones. So as a result, the microphone is just closer to your face, which actually I've received some feedback from people saying that I can actually be heard more because I have to stand back a little bit further away from the inside of the Isovox. The flap in the back is still down, but for some reason it's just, I'm, I'm pretty loud and obnoxious by nature anyway. So like I have that working against me. I actually put this to the test in a couple of different ways, uh, subjecting my poor family to this. So just to kind of, you know, show you how things went. So here it is, let's check it out. So today I thought I would put the Isovox 2 to the test. I started with just a vocal warm up using all the exercises taken from the Zen of Screaming DVD. That's a really good go-to that I, that I start with just to warm up the voice. And a lot of them just kind of test the dynamic range of the voice. Uh, some of them are a little more subtle, but then towards the end it gets really, really big. And I wanted to test like how effective the Isovox blocked those out. So for the most part, it seemed like everything was good except for towards the end when I was doing the hee hee hey hey's. He 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 hey hey! He 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 hey hey! He 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 hey hey! Do you definitely hear that? Yeah. Yeah? How was that? But I find if I can get all the way in, it drowns out my sound more which is the whole point of having an Isovox to begin with, right? Okay, so now I'm doing the metal scream test for my family to see. There's no microphone in here right now, but you know, let's just pretend that there is one. Let's use the fancy dancy light. You guys ready? Yeah! Do one more. Yeah. Yeah. 
Much quieter? It was quieter, but I can still hear it. Okay. It's supposed to, you know, muffle your sound so like the neighbors don't hear you. That's the whole thing that they market this with. So if there can be some kind of um, adaptation to the ISOVOX where we can have these dynamic microphones to be able to handle a higher SPL level for like styles like metal and rock and all that sort of stuff, that would be amazing. Whether it's making the ISOVOX longer to accommodate these microphones or just to have an adjustable microphone stand, something like that, that would be amazing. So topic number two, the breathing and ventilation situation in the ISOVOX 2. I am holding here the uh, user's manual and in it, it talks about how when using the ISOVOX, you want to make sure to take a five minute break for every two minutes that you're inside the ISOVOX. If you can see here, as this little picture will show you, you can see in the back how there's this flap that comes down over the ISOVOX that's supposed to be behind you and basically seal you in while you are tracking your vocal. That's supposed to help reduce all of the noise that you are generating inside the ISOVOX. So if you have the flap closed in the back and you're singing for about two minutes, you're supposed to just stop, take a five minute break, catch your breath, and then go back in and use the ISOVOX. Now, for a recording artist, that might be great if you're just doing single takes and whatnot, but my issue that I have with that is, what if you're trying to do a song in one full take that is longer than two minutes, right? Most songs are at least three minutes in length, if, if not longer. So what if you're hired by somebody who wants just that live vocal feel, you know, who just wants to go like really, really old school and just have you just do here, I'm paying you a thousand dollars to do this all in one take, warts and all. Let's say you have a situation like that, but you're not able to do it because you're running out of air. To my understanding, the ISO box was developed not only for recording artists, but for just full on rehearsal as well for a vocalist. So what if you're trying to rehearse a full song without stopping? And it's substantial. I've been in there certain times where I felt like I was losing air pretty quickly just because of whatever vocal I was delivering. And as a result, my own performance had been compromised due to the lack of air. Not only just from the physical aspect of it, but just from the actual distraction of it. If you're recording the vocals and you're, you're really in the moment capturing something, the last thing that you wanna have happen is be distracted by, oh, I, I'm running out of air <laughs> inside this box, right? You don't wanna have to just stop everything and then take a five minute break and ventilate if you're in the middle of something. This is a huge problem as a vocalist and making sure that you don't have to have any interruptions while you're trying to get a perfect take is huge. And it, the last thing that should be getting in the way is breathing, right? So if there is some way to develop some kind of ventilation system for the ISOVOX, this would be hugely beneficial for musicians because on one hand, it's a great tool if you're just going take by take, doing one thing at a time. However, the reality is that there's gonna be plenty of sessions where you're just supposed to do all one live take or you're rehearsing an entire song or maybe you're doing a live stream performance and maybe you're doing it inside your ISO box, who knows. Um, obviously you can leave the flap in the back open but depending on what style you're singing in, that kind of defeats the purpose of the ISOVOX to begin with, right? Like the whole point is to be able to cancel out the sound so you're not disrupting the neighbors or anything like that. So again, I feel like for the price of the ISOVOX, this should be something that's addressed, absolutely. My suggestion is just to make this one, the ISOVOX 2, a more affordable option, I would cut the price in half to be honest, and expand on its original design to accommodate these practical issues that remote vocalists face. That way you can serve an audience that's more able to invest in your product. And what I mean by that is that you have this entire market out here in the United States alone of just home studio owners and session musicians and just freelance vocalists, that type of thing. There's that market. However, you have a ton of hobbyists as well. And call me crazy, but if I was a hobbyist, a thousand dollars is a lot to spend on a piece of, you know, foam. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's a lot to invest if you're a hobbyist. So maybe as a suggestion, if it were me, and again, 
I'm not you guys, so it doesn't really matter what I say. You don't have to do anything. But for what it's worth, if it were me, I would make the ISOVOX 2 a scaled down version, maybe at like 500 bucks, and expand on the original design to incorporate some of these ideas to make it that much better and justify it being a thousand dollars, justify it having like the premium price. You know, that way I think you would expand your reach, you'd find a much wider audience, and you'd be serving more people. So, I don't know, just consider that food for thought. If you don't agree with me, you can tell me to go to hell, it's fine. But uh, again, I say all of this with love and I wouldn't be saying this if I didn't feel passionately about the product and feel passionate about what I do with it. So, for anybody else, there's my honest take on the ISOVOX 2. I love it, I use it all the time. That said, there's definitely room for improvement and I can't wait to see what happens in the future with these guys. So I don't know how many of you out there actually own an ISOVOX, but seeing as I'm an owner, I just wanted to give my two cents on the matter. And I'm just curious if I'm the only one who kind of feels this way. So if you're out there and you actually happen to own one of these, I'd be very curious to know what your thoughts are. Did I miss anything? Is there anything that you would add about it that could be improved? Just let me know in the comments, you know? Thanks for watching.